Hello, and thank you for joining us on this special H1N1 Community Alert. I'm Leanne Morejon. By now, I'm sure that you've heard of the H1N1 strain of influenza, or the swine flu. It seems like everyone's talking about the swine flu these days, but questions still remain. What can we do to stay safe? Where did this flu come from? And with cases already reaching the state of Florida, what does this mean for us in Coral Gables? Here to help us sort through the swine flu facts and fiction is Dr. Mark Grossman, Medical Director for the City of Coral Gables. Thank you, Dr. Mark Grossman, for Thank joining you. us today. So tell me a little bit about what exactly the swine flu is. The swine flu is a, a, a virus that originated from pigs and tra is normally transmitted from pig to pig and stays within the pig community, I guess you would say. Um, and in this case, jumped from a pig to a human, which is unusual. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's where it originated from, and they think they've traced the source to a com small community in Mexico, uh, but they're not 100% sure. Normally that doesn't happen. There's bird flu, and there's human flu, and there's pig flu, and you know, so this one is actually transmitted to humans. So what exactly is the difference between this swine strain of flu and the regular flu? Uh, well, the regular flu normally uh, follows certain patterns where you know, some people get sick and has very typical symptoms, and you know, we've already built up some sort of an immunity to it, plus we have uh, uh, vaccines that work with the regular flu. With the swine flu, uh, because it's not normally seen in humans and hasn't been seen in humans in some time, uh, we don't have the same immunity to it, and in this case it's spreading a little bit faster than the regular flu. Uh, plus we don't have the immunity or the vaccines, so it's a little bit harder to prevent. So what kind of symptoms um come about with the swine flu in people? It's really the same as the regular flu. And what we're seeing now is actually even milder than the seasonal influenza that we, uh, we saw. The, the flu season actually just ended uh, a couple of months ago. Um, but the same thing with the fever, cough, uh, sneezing, uh, body aches, chills, that kind of thing. So how contagious is this strain of flu? Well, we're not sure. The concern is that it is spread very quickly. Um, the thing we're not sure about is there's probably a lot of cases out there that are just not being reported. Um, and that's because the symptoms are so mild. So if it were something that was making people sicker, we'd know because people would be coming to the hospital and going to their doctors saying that they have the flu and then they'd get tested. What's happening now is you know, people are just saying, well, I have uh, somewhat of a fever and I was recently in Mexico or another endemic area and they're going to get tested and they just happen to be positive. And that's what happened actually in New York at the school where they found a, a large number of students that did have the swine flu, but weren't particularly sick. Uh, they just had very mild symptoms, but there was a large number of them that were in Mexico, and they tested positive for it. But again, if there was no news about the swine flu or the H1N1 uh, virus, they would have never gotten tested. So we're not really sure how contagious it is. It is being seen in a lot of different countries, and it's spreading uh, relatively quickly, but again, it's not making people sick. So like you mentioned with the case in the school, that was uh, one case and it turned to, to more and more. So right. how many, how is this spread from person to person? You know, is it just through physical contact or can it be found in the air? Uh, it's found in the air and it stays in the air for maybe uh, a few hours, but it's really through physical contact with uh, somebody's droplets. Uh, in other words, if they sneeze or they cough or if they happen to throw up, uh, you know, any, anything that comes from inside the body will have some uh, virus on it. And then if you then come in contact with it, uh, you can get sick. So that's what the recommendations are to try and prevent that from happening. So this includes skin as well as, you know, like a tabletop surface or something like that? Well, what it is that the droplets are out there. So let's say you cough and then, you know, you cough into your hand and then you touch something. It can actually stay on whatever you touch uh, for several hours up to a day. So now if somebody else comes in and touches that, then they can contract the virus. So it has to be mucous membrane to mucous membrane, like your mouth or your nose or your eyes. So, you know, somebody would have to cough, touch something, then you would touch that same object and then touch your mouth inadvertently. Right. And we do that all the time without even thinking of it. So is this one of the reasons why the swine flu has been able to spread so quickly? Uh, probably. I just, it's very contagious, but again, not making people very ill. Now, this is a question that, you know, mm -hmm. for some may seem like a, an easy question to answer, but it's been heard, um, people wondering, can this flu be spread through eating pork products? No, not at all. Um, that's not how flu is, uh, uh, is contracted anyway, normally. 
um, but it's, that's not the mode of transmission. The mode of transmission is clearly from mucous membrane to mucous membrane. Um, you know, one of the recommendations was, it's always smart to cook pork. If you are going to eat pork, you cook it. And that's why they've sort of changed the terminology to go away from swine flu to the, you know, influenza A, H1, N1 flu. Uh, so people aren't, don't get confused and say they can't eat pork. Um, but you should be cooking pork anyway. There's a lot of other things in pork that if you don't cook, you can, can make you sick. So just to be clear, there's no reason we can't eat any bacon or pork exactly. or ham. <laughs> just cook it anyway, but not because of the flu. It's, that's not how you contract it. Okay. So now that we know about, you know, um, the way that this is spreading and, and things like that, what can we do to stay safe and, and kind of keep these germs at bay? Yeah, the most important thing is hygiene, and that's what everybody's recommending, you know, from the President of the United States on down. It's coming from the CDC and the WHO to sort of break the cycle. So, you know, if you cough or you sneeze, uh, to do it into either, you know, a tissue or they're saying the sneeze into your, uh, into your sleeve, and then to wash your hands or use, uh, you know, the alcohol uh, hand products like uh, Purell or other gels that are out there, hand wipes. Um, and that's really breaking the cycle. So hand hygiene and, you know, if you feel that you're sick, um, not necessarily to go to your doctor, to the emergency room, which some people have been doing because they misunderstood or they got nervous or, you know, whatever it is. Um, but, you know, don't go to the doctor unless you're actually sick. If you would normally go to the doctor, then go to the doctor. But don't go to the doctor and say that, you know, I, I think I may be sick or I came in contact with somebody who was sick and I'm not really that sick right now because you're just wasting time and then you don't need to be tested for that. Um, so just uh, if you feel that you are sick, it's probably a good idea to maybe stay home from work for a day or so. Uh, again, it's just sort of breaking the cycle of transmitting from, you know, your droplets or, or whatever. Okay. Um, so really the hygiene thing is the most important thing. 